We defined energy as the ability to do work, not necessarily work being done, but rather the ability to do work. Sometimes work is being done, sometimes it's just stored in order for work to be done later. It's kind of like money, right? It's kind of like money. If I've got money in my wallet and I go to the store and buy a Slurpee, or I go to the store and buy um, uh, a phone, a new phone, or go to Costco and spend $500 on stuff I don't need, um, then I'm using my money, okay? I'm using my money. That's work being done. But if my money's in the bank, then I'm not using it. Work is not being done, but that money that's in the bank has the potential to do work. It has the ability to do work. It's just being kept off to the side, stored for some future time when I may need to use that. So energy is the ability to do work. Sometimes it's actually doing work, and sometimes it's just being stored so that we can do work later on. If it's actually doing work right now, what kind of energy do we have? If I'm spending my money on the Slurpee right now, then I've got, yeah, yeah, kinetic energy, good. Kinetic energy we define as energy of motion. Anything that's moving, we're talking about uh, a subatomic particle that's moving all the way up to a planet or a star that's moving has kinetic energy. Kinetic energy can be described by this equation, E k is equal to 1 half mv squared. E, of course, stands for kinetic energy. What would the units for kinetic energy be? Remember that? Joules, right. And, of course, kinetic energy would be a vector or a scalar? It's a scalar. Any kind of energy is measured in joules, and any kind of energy, including kinetic energy, is a scalar. M stands for mass, and the mass would be measured in kilograms. It's a scalar as well. V stands for speed, not velocity, speed, and it's measured in meters per second. Sometimes we have to do a conversion, right? Sometimes we've got our mass given to us in grams and we have to convert to kilograms. Let's say that I have, let's say that I went home and I went to the store and I bought 500 grams of ground beef so that I could make some pasta sauce tonight. But I wanted to convert that to kilograms for whatever reason to see how many kilograms of ground beef that I had to make my pasta sauce. How would I do that? Divide by 1,000, yeah. So that ends up being 0.500 kilograms. Sometimes some people, at least, have a little bit of trouble with that. Do we divide or do we multiply? Most people remember it's 1,000, right? But is it divide or is it multiply? Well, if you're unsure, then just guess. But just check your guess. So if I got 500 grams, and let's say, let's say I happen to multiply it by 1,000. I get 500,000 kilograms. Am I seriously going to cook up 500,000 kilograms of beef tonight for pasta sauce? Unless I'm making pasta for the entire city of Calgary, then I'm probably not cooking up 500,000 kilograms of beef. So it's okay to guess, but just check your guess to make sure that it's reasonable, right? 500,000 kilograms is not reasonable. So if I guess that, then it must be divide. So I divide and get 0 0.500 kilograms, much more reasonable, right? What if I had, I don't know, what if I had... Um, what if I had uh, a speed given to me in kilometers per hour? Let's say it was 90 kilometers per hour. How do I convert that to meters per second? We've done this day two or day three of physics 20, right, Pre? Right. We've got to convert kilometers to meters, so it becomes 90 times 1,000 meters over, oh, we've got to convert hours to seconds. There's 3,600 seconds in an hour. So 90,000 divided by 3,600 gives me 25 meters per second. Right? We're used to doing that. We've done that a few times, several times actually. What about this one? Five centimeters per second. That's pretty slow speed, by the way. Five centimeters per second. That's like snail pace. Five centimeters a second. So we times it by 100. Okay, we know the factor is 100 because it's centimeters and meters, right? We don't have to do anything to the bottom because it's already in seconds. So let's try that. Let's times it by 100. We get 500 meters per second. Okay, so we've got a snail going at 5 centimeters per second. We're saying that's equivalent to 500 meters per second, 5 football fields per second, 1 and a half times the speed of sound. It's okay to guess that. But by your reaction, I'm thinking that you realize your guess was wrong. Yeah. And that's okay, as long as you realize your guess is wrong, right? The important thing is that you don't just say, oh, 500 meters per second, and then blindly go with it. 
Check your guess. It's wrong. Okay, guess again. So what, are, what is it going to be? It's not times by, by 100. It's going to be divide by 100. So we end up getting 0 0.050 meters per second. And that seems more reasonable, right? 0 0.050 meters per second is more reasonable than 500 meters per second. Just check your guess, all right? Um, be careful, though. Be careful. Sometimes we see something like this, and we want to do something crazy, like, you know, multiply, divide. Like, listen, the only reason we divide it by 3,600 here is because we had hours on the bottom. We needed seconds. If it was kilometers per second, all we would have done is converted kilometers to meters. So just do what you got to do, and don't go any further than that. All right. Our other kind of energy was potential energy. This is stored energy. This is my money in the bank, right? Not my money that I'm spending to get a Slurpee, but my money that's stored in the bank that maybe down the road I'll use to buy a Slurpee, but not using right now. What were some of the types of stored or potential energy that we talked about yesterday? Yeah. Uh, okay, so the, so the energy stored in gasoline, which is what type of energy? Chemical, Chemical potential energy, right. It's another type of potential energy, another type of stored energy that has the ability to do something but isn't doing anything right now. Nuclear, Nuclear yeah. It's, it's not the same thing as chemical, but it's kind of analogous to it. It's the energy that's stored in the nucleus of an atom versus the energy that's stored in the chemical bonds in atoms. Gave you an example yesterday of, oh, you got one there? Yeah. Okay, electric potential energy. Absolutely. Yeah. Spring, spring or elastic potential. That's the one that we were talking about yesterday when we were talking about the little guns we made with the clothespins. Technically, that would be elastic potential, but spring potential works mathematically exactly the same as elastic potential. So we usually group them together. Spring or elastic potential. We will... Uh, a little bit later this year, focus a little bit more on spring and elastic potential energy. What's the main one that we're going to focus on this unit, though? Yep. Gravitational. Good. Gravitational potential energy. Gravitational potential energy is that energy that's due to an object's height above the ground. And the higher something is, the more potential it has to fall, the more potential it has to gain speed. Right? All right. Uh, yesterday, uh, we left you with, uh, uh, yesterday we did some questions on page 303, uh, and I think we're okay with those. Uh, we left you with some questions on uh, your kinetic energy worksheet. Are there any issues with those questions on your kinetic energy worksheet? Any that we'd like to go over? All right, let's have a look at question number 10 on that worksheet. It says, what's the speed of a 20 Newton object that has a kinetic energy of 9 joules? What is that Newton? What does that mean, 20 Newton object? It's the force of gravity acting on it, right? It's the weight of the object, not the mass, but the weight. So what we're going to do is take this and find the mass from that. Twenty point zero newtons divided by nine point eight one meters per second squared is going to give me two point two point something. Two point zero three eight seven. Okay, so what do I do with that now that I get the mass? Now it's now it's easier, right? Once you have the mass, we could just say EK is equal to one half mv squared and rearrange it to solve for V. Although rearranging this is not trivial either. I gotta get rid of the half in the M. How do I do that? Got a couple options here. Yeah, I can take the half and the m over by dividing. Ek over 1 half m equals v squared. Or I could have taken the 2 over by multiplying by 2, because it's divided by a 2, right? Multiply by 2. 2 Ek over m is exactly the same thing as Ek over 1 half m. So either way, whatever works for you better. Now, how do I get rid of the square there? Taylor, how do we get rid of that? Right, so I'm just going to square root that side. And then square root this side is what I end up with. Kinetic energy is what? 9 joules 
divide it by one half of 2.0387. Square root it. Um, 9 divided by, I use some brackets there, 0.5 times 2.0387 and brackets equals 8.8. .8. .8. Square root that. Get 2.97. Two point nine seven meters per second. Does that seem reasonable? Yeah, probably. Three meters per second. Yeah, that's probably like that's a pretty decent jogging speed. Two point nine seven meters per second. A little fast for walking, a little slow for sprinting. Is that right? Any others on the page? All right. Let's spend a couple minutes uh, looking at gravitational potential energy then. We addressed it before, but we'll just provide a little bit more detail on it now. Gravitational potential energy is the energy that's stored in an object due to its height. And of course, the higher it is, the more potential energy it has. And why? Well, because the more work it has the ability to do. It's like if I've got $100 in the bank, then that's stored money. It has the ability to do work. If I've got $10,000 in the bank, then I've got more money. I have more, that money has more ability to do work, right? The more energy I have, the more ability to do work. Well, if we're higher up, then we have more ability to do work. If you start a roller coaster car 10 meters above the ground versus, well, let's say you start at 50 meters above the ground, versus 10 meters above the ground, when it's 50 meters above the ground, it's going to be going faster when it gets to the ground. It has more ability to do work. Now, this middle sentence is kind of important. The gravitational potential energy is always measured relative to something else. What I mean by that is that we've got to basically pick a frame of reference. Let's say we've got a table in the ground, and we've got a ball on the table, and the table is 1.0 meter high. We can define the potential energy relative to either the ground or the top of the table. The potential energy relative to the ground is something, because it's got a height. It's got potential to fall to the ground. The potential energy relative to the table is zero, because it has no potential to fall to the table, because it's already on the table. So you get to choose where your frame of reference is. Usually it will be the earth, the ground, but you get to choose whatever ends up being most convenient for you. Here's how we're going to calculate it once we've chosen our frame of reference. We're going to say EP is equal to, anybody know this? Yeah? Yeah, MGH. Somebody this morning said weight times height. Was that person right? Weight is defined as force, times gra force of gravity, right, which is M times G. So yeah, it is weight times height. Not sure where that person got that from, but it was right. Usually we write it though MGH. So EP is gravitational potential energy, measured in joules. It's scalar. M is mass, measured in kilograms. G is just, well, if we're on the Earth, it's 9.81 meters per second squared. If we're on the moon, it's different. If it's on Mars, it's different still. And the height is, put a star by this, this is the height above whatever you want, the ground, the table, whatever you want. And it's going to be measured in meters. OK, let's have a look at an example that goes with that on page 298. It says, we got a toy car set up on a tabletop. We want to find the potential energy of the car relative to the floor. Well, OK, I said before you can define your, your uh, potential energy relative to whatever you want. Well, only if they don't say, to define it relative to the floor. They're telling me. To give, me, to give them the potential energy relative to the floor. So that's what we have to do. For question A, we're going to say EP is equal to MGH. Now, relative to the table, if we wanted to find it relative to the table, we'd use this height. If we want to find it relative to the floor, we will use this height, 2.15 meters. There's more potential to fall to the floor than it does to the table, right? My mass is 0 0.025 kilograms times 9.81 meters per second squared. Notice we're always making this positive here, because energy is a scalar. We always have to get a positive value for that. 
my height above the floor is 2.15 meters. I do that, I get uh, EP is equal to 0 0.52789 joules, which we're going to round to three digits, 0 0.528 joules. There we go. There's question A. B says, the what's the change in gravitational potential energy of the car when it rises to the bottom of the hill? Change in potential energy. Final energy minus the initial energy. The final energy is MGH. The initial energy is quick. What's the initial energy? Quick. Got, or, uh, sorry, Braden. No. Relative to the table it is, I don't think I want to do that, though. I want to do a relative to the floor because that's what I did in question A. What's the initial energy relative to the floor? MGH? Well, we just found its value, right? 0 0.52789 joules. That's its initial energy relative to the floor. Cal, you could have done this relative to the tabletop. But since we already have the value relative to the floor for the initial, why not use it? All right, so we're going to say uh, mass is 0.025 times 9.81. Um, whoops, this is MGHF uh, times the final height, which is 0 0.950. Subtract 0.52789 joules. Figure that out. Point zero two five times nine point eight one times point nine five zero. Subtract five point two seven point five two seven. You get point two nine four. No wait, I don't. I get negative point two nine four. A second, didn't I say? Didn't I say that energy is a scalar? If I get a negative value there. How can it be a scalar? What does that negative mean? What is it? Yeah, it means something, but it's not a direction. It's not a negative, like uh, left or down or south. It's not a direction. Yes. Yeah, we're talking about a negative change. Not a negative potential energy, but a negative change in potential energy, right? So that just means I lost that much potential. Now, if this question had said, how much kinetic energy did the car gain, what would the answer be? 0 0.294. If it loses 0.294 potential, where does it go? Kinetic energy. So it gains 0.294 joules of kinetic energy. All right. All right, let's have a look at uh, the questions on page 298 if they go along with this, please. We'll take a quick look at question number three. It says, a winch pulls a 250-gram block, 250-kilogram block, up a 20-meter long inclined plane. Here's my 20.0 meters. Here's my angle of my inclined plane, 35.0 degrees. We want to find the change in gravitational potential energy as it goes from the bottom to the top. Well, if we want to find the change in potential energy, we need the final height and the initial height. Well, the initial height is easy, right? But the final height, not so much so. What is the initial height? What's the initial height down here at the bottom? Zero. So we're just going to cross that off. M times G times zero is zero. But let's get the final height. We're going to do that by using some trigonometry. Uh, if we're looking for the Y component here, which is really what we're looking for, we're going to say uh, sine 35 degrees is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, or y ends up being equal to 20 sine 35, um, whatever that works out to be. 20 times sine 35 gives me um, 11.4715. So there's the height. There's the final height. Now we're going to say m times g times that final height, 250 times 9.81 times 
11.4715, I assume, gives me the answer in the book of 2.81 times 10 to the 4 joules. Is that right? Yes, how many of you got that? Good. Good. So um, we have to just step outside the box for a little bit on this question, right, and recognize that, like, look, if it's just, if we're given the height, it's an easy question. If we're not given the height, then let's get it. You know, let's just figure out a way to get it. And then, then it becomes an easy question after that. All right, uh, here's what I want to finish off with today. You guys are probably going to end up finishing this off uh, in class here, but I'd like you to take a look at uh, the energy worksheet number two, the potential energy one, and I'd like you to do up to uh, number seven, up to question number seven on that worksheet.